Hello! In this belated Friday Functions video, I'm going to talk to you about how to get the ID value back when you patch to a SharePoint list. Someone asked this question recently and I wanted to make sure that I explain it in case others need it. Now, patch function, which you've probably heard about already, is a function that can be used to build a, a, a amount of data together in a group and then submit it to any given data source. So in the case of a patch, you are not using a form control. So because when you use a form controls that's bound to a SharePoint list, you just have to use a function called submit form and then put the form name in the middle. But sometimes you want the freedom of placing your controls on the screen and you don't want a form and so you have to patch the data. But when you patch the data, you need the ID back in order to edit the data. So, and sometimes in order to create a child list, right? So if you wanted to submit to another list and have a reference to this ID, then you'd need to have, get that ID back. So you could use it when you submit the child, right? So let me go take you to an app of this nature. So I have this app here that I've made just by placing controls, controls on the screen. So just to go through the controls, I have a label header at the top. And if you look at the text of that, I have welcome and the user's full name. And this is so that when whoever looks at this screen, um, they basically see um, their name at the top, right? Because we're using the user function. You know about that. Then I added a couple of random labels here just to define what these text input boxes should have in them. And I've, I've also put some tips in there. So I'm going to delete what's in there. And uh, I'm using the slider here for the amount, but I actually have enter the name of your charity here as a text hint text and the default is blank. And then on this one, the default is the slider one value so that they can either type in here or they can drag the slider, okay? Um, but based on when they do those two things, it will submit to our SharePoint list a title and an amount. Um, and so let's do that first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the Submit button and create this patch. And most of you know how to do patching. I'm just going to do the patch function. Remember that whenever you do a function, you need to open and close paren. If you get in the middle of that, it'll actually give you the syntax. So I wanna sort the, 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 the list called giving donations. Since this is a new record, which means I'm adding it new, I'm going to use defaults on that same list as which record I'm going to update. And I just got to put my fingers on the right keys on the keyboard and default that. Then I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to go to the next line and open a squiggly, close a squiggly, and close the paren. And sometimes I will type my syntax squigglies first just so I don't forget them. So there's an open paren after patch and a closed paren for the patch. There's an open paren for the, for the defaults. And then these squigglies are where I put each column that I want to update. So I'm going to update the title column on SharePoint with what's inside. Just kind of see if I can slide this up. This text box here, which I'm calling text charity. So I'm going to do text charity dot text. That's going to be my title. Then on the line underneath that, I'm going to fill in the amount with what's in this field right here, which is called text amount. But I need to make sure it's a number, so I'm gonna wrap it in a value function. Just make sure it's read as a number, okay? Because my SharePoint list is currency there. And basically that patches to the list. So if we try this out, let's say my charity is um, baseball, children, I don't know, you know, I'm making up stuff. And then I slide this over, so I'm contributing $819 to them. I press submit. Even though I don't have a form, I go back to here, and I do a refresh. I'm sorry, I was testing earlier. So I'm going to try and see if I can get this screen to refresh. Um, and you'll see that these are the three items. Now, baseball children is, is ID number nine. 
because I had deleted two, three, four, five, and seven, eight. So this is item number nine. But how do I get that number back here? How can I tell what the new ID number is that I just submit? Well, here's a very fun little thing. Um, I'm going to insert a label here so you can see this. And I'm just going to slide this over here. This, is, we'll go, this will show us the ID of the last input item. So if I was using forms, I could use the form name dot last submit, but I'm not. I'm patching. So how do I get the ID number of that patch? Because I might want to use it in an edit. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Around this patch statement, I'm just going to put the set function. So I'm going to wrap set around patch, right? So open quote after the word set, close quote at the end. And then I'm going to give my variable a name. So this is a global variable that I'm going to call var ID. All right. So now all I've done is added a variable around the patch action so that I can get back the response. Like what comes back after I submit this to SharePoint. So now I can get anything I want from this parameter called var ID. All right. So then what I'm going to do on this label over here is I'm going to default the text here to that var ID dot what I want back from SharePoint, which is going to be the ID. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, I haven't done anything, so there's no variable. I'm going to name this, and I probably should reset these controls. Let's do that first. I'm sorry. I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to resubmit this. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to reset my controls. So I use the reset. The control name is text amount. I'm also going to reset the control name text charity. Okay, that will take them back to being blank. All right. After this submission. All right. So those are just two things I added to get them blank. But right now I'm going to edit these and I'm going to call this... Um, Charity R Us, and I'm going to donate, I don't know, that much money. Now watch when I press submit. It's going to go run those ants because it updated SharePoint. It did reset these fields, although it didn't change the slider. But notice over here, it gives me back the number 10. So let's refresh this and see if that's the number of the new item. And you can see that the new number for that item is Charity RS. It's 10, right? So I would have had to reset the slider too if I wanted this to go back to the default amount, which I can add to the button. So I can add another, and I'm going to do a couple of things here. So I'm going to add a reset button here, and I'm going to reset slider 1. So it's going to go back to the default value, in my opinion. Okay, so now I've reset all of my controls. This will take it back to the default. But now I want to do a couple more things. Now that I know what my ID is, I'm going to insert a gallery, maybe. I don't know. Let's insert, let's insert another control. So I'm going to insert a, another text input control. And I'm going to move that down here. And I'm going to just copy this little label. And I'm going to say here, change amount, right? So I'm not in a form. I'm not in a gallery where it would be easy to use this item. But in order for me to let them type in here, I need to, and so that I can edit it, I really need to know what the ID number is here. So I'm going to copy and paste this submit button and change this to change amount and again this is a sample app so don't expect any app that you make to be this simple or but it's just teaching you this this process so now since i copied that from the other button my on select is <clears throat> a patch i don't need the var around it so let's delete that and the extra paren now i'm going to change this so it knows which items should I update, right? I should update the first item where the filter for that gallery giving donations ID equals var ID, which is my 
variable that I stuffed the response into, looking for that item, it seems to think I left out a return, I mean a paren, so let's put that in. Let's see, so we got, we got, a, uh, we, we're missing a paren for first, okay? And this is something I was just talking to my friend about. It's so easy to miss parens, but you need to make sure that every single function you have has an open and closed paren, and pay attention to where your semicolons are because you don't count the parens, you know, between the semicolons, right? Across semicolons. And so now I've got that right, but I don't want to, actually, I don't want to edit the title. I could if I wanted to, like if they could go back up. But instead of using the amount field up above, I'm going to use this one that we added. Let's rename this um, revised. And I always rename because otherwise it's really hard to remember what I'm doing in my formulas. And so the amount that I want to change is instead of that one, it's revised amount dot text. So now what I'm saying, when I click this, I want to edit this source where the ID equals var ID. I don't really need to edit the title in this case. I just want to edit the amount and I want to edit it, whatever they type here right so this one I'm gonna force them to type inside here just for the exercise we could put another slider and all that stuff but now I'm gonna go here remember that it picked up my last um, variable so I can go in here and type let's type 520 so what's 418 is whatever whatever it was before is gonna change to 520 on item number 10 so if I click change amount it resets all my fields up here. I didn't put the reset for this one. <laughs> it's always, I have to remember these little things and I know it's not always easy. So I have to reset that field that we just renamed, reset, revised amount. And that'll put that back to the default value of that field, which is nothing. Um, but it did work, all right? So if I go here and do a refresh, what we did just now is change item number 10 from 418 to, I think we said 520. And there you go, okay? So just to show you that again, if I am making a new item, I can do it up here. This is my new item. Anything I press here is gonna make a new item. It is also going to push into the var variable that I set around that patch statement the latest ID number. So when I press submit, everything gets reset. I find the latest ID number right here. So whatever I type in here will now become the new value in item number 11 when I hit this. And of course, I have everything resetting right after. And then if I refresh this, you can see this. All right, so I didn't use any forms, which means I didn't use the submit function. I didn't use any galleries where I could use a this item function. I just used patches and I was able to retrieve the ID that I needed so I could edit that list item later. I could also use that variable to create a child item in another list that references ID number 11. So I hope this made sense to you. Put notes in the comments if you need more detail. I kind of worked myself through like which what was most important in this video. I think the most important thing is how to get back the ID from the thing you just patched. Um, what I is I documented this in PowerPoint. So and I used a, a, a gallery over here, but you could try doing this on your own. Um, basically, you're setting a variable around the patch statement, which gives you a response in this variable which you can use to uh, filter the list and change something later. So try it out, let me know, give me comments below. I know this is not the easiest thing to do, but I think once you get it, you will know when to use it. And again, if you can use forms and galleries, way easier. But if you don't wanna use forms and galleries and you wanna be pixel perfect on where you place things, then you have this option as well.